There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Camera Chronicles. I'm your host, Max Rigo, joined today by Alex Jackson, our sports features editor and men's basketball bait, who, who is live from Greenville, South Carolina. Alex, thanks for joining the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on. All right, yeah, thanks for thanks again for coming in after uh, last night's six, 78 to sixty one win for Duke over fifteen seeded Cal State Fullerton uh, in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Duke's first NCAA tournament game in three years sounds crazy to say that, uh, Alex. I know you talked about that in your sidebar a little bit, but it's it's been a while. It's been a while, man. And uh, you know, we're coming to you Saturday afternoon. Uh, you know, day after that game and a day away from from Duke's second round matchup against seven seeded Michigan State. So. Lot to get to, but first let's just talk about last night's game. Uh, again, seventeen point victory for Duke. Mark Williams had a, a 15, 5, 5, and five game. Uh Paolo Bicaro, seventeen points. But Alex, what's your first takeaway from last night? Yeah, my first well, first of all, I just want to say that the, the sentiment in the press conference after was very much uh just Coach K happy to be back. And uh for most of those guys, it's their first time being in the tournament, or almost all of them, it's their first time being in the tournament. So Everyone was just uh, trying to battle through the nerves a little bit. Um, everyone was just really excited to be on that stage. But uh, my main takeaway from the game was was the defensive turnaround um, from the kind of rough ACC tournament that we saw from Duke, especially in that championship game. Um, my one word to describe Duke that game on defense was pesky. They they really were just getting hands in, knocking the ball out. They had 10 blocks, I think, a bunch of steals. Um, I just feel you know, like everyone was really contributing, shifting well. Uh, rotating and really uh, just getting on the ball right away, staying in front of the defender. So it was just, it was an encouraging sign to see as they prepared to take on a little bit of tougher teams, Michigan State and maybe beyond that. Yeah. I mean, Cal State Fullerton only shot 37.5% from the field and 29.4% from three. Um, Duke out rebounded them by eight, uh, out rebounded them defensively by 10. Actually, Cal State had two more offensive rebounds. So that might be something to something to work on because I think Duke in some areas like just a little overhelped a little bit um, on some of those drives and, and, you know, getting Mark and Paolo out of the paint, uh, open up the lane for some offensive rebounds. But yeah, I mean, you know, 21 assists on 30 made baskets. That's obviously pretty impressive. Uh, nine of nine from the foul line, uh, obviously on a pretty small sample size, but that's something that really cost them against Virginia Tech and that loss in the ACC title game. So uh, and 49, 40.9% from three. So the stats kind of, other than offensive rebounding, I think in turnovers, Duke had 13 turnovers, Cal State had eight. Everything else kind of plays out in Duke's favor. And, and that's an encouraging sign because because I think they really, they were not connected defensively. Their communication was off. Uh, it was basically non-existent, honestly. Uh, their pick and roll defense got shredded by Carolina and then, Virginia Tech shredded them with like those dribble handoffs, Hunter Couture, uh, Kivi Aluma, Storm Murphy, those guys kind of just ripped them apart. And it was encouraging, I, I would say, to see them really look looking more locked in defensively. Uh, pick and roll D still probably needs a little bit of work. Um, but I think, I mean, Mark Williams had, a, had another really impressive game down low. He had, looking now, he had five blocks. Um, he's now, at, I believe, fourth for blocks in a single season at Duke. Uh, he's, you know, he's improved, I think, as the season's gone on and, and staying home and and not really, you know, chasing those blocks, but but picking his spots to be aggressive with those shot attempts. So anything else you got on? I know Paolo had 17, so, you know, he, I feel like we got to kind of talk about him. So what, what are your thoughts on his performance? Yeah, I'll just say also that uh, the, the offensive rebound, it was kind of concerning to me. I know that's kind of been an issue for Duke all year. Um, they didn't let up a ton of offensive rebounds, but uh, it they the offensive rebounds that Cal State Fullerton was were getting were were sh- rebounds that Mark Williams should have been grabbing or Paolo Theo someone else like a, a box out needed to happen. So when it's happening against uh, I won't say a bad team but a less good team like Cal State Fullerton, you know it's going to show up against a good like a much better team like Michigan State, especially with a guy like Joey Hauser. Um, and the turnovers again continuing to be an issue. Although in the press conference, I part of it. We could say is that the, the slippery floor issue seemed to play a factor that 
I know Wendell Moore and Coach K talked about that in the press conference. So hopefully that that gets fixed up and Duke can stand their feet and kind of limit the turnovers and kind of get into their motion a little bit more. In terms of Paolo playing, I thought he had a great game. Um, defense has been in question for him, especially around the, the, when people look at him as a draft prospect. His defense isn't his uh, probably top attribute right now, but um, I thought he had a great defensive game. Uh, really, it, his impact on the floor was noticeable when he was off the floor. Kelf stayed for it and kind of got back into it. I mean, he got down to like seven points at one point, I think. Um, but yeah, offensively, he was same old Paolo. He shot it from three well, which is nice to see and dominate on the inside. Um, but uh, defensively, I was really, really impressed by him. Yeah, I thought he played really well. I mean, he took over early, hit that one corner three uh, to make it five nothing. And then he made the three that made it 10 to two. So we really. I mean, he's always been a little inconsistent. He still has like that flat line uh, arc on his jumper, but it goes in sometimes. So I think he's done it. He's underrated in terms of being able to, you know, catch on the perimeter and and fire, um, just giving like giving teams a bit of a different look. Um, yeah, and a couple of quick notes. Obviously, Trevor Keels uh, moved to the bench first time uh, since February, late February. Uh, he's moved to the bench. What do you what do you see from from that kind of dynamic, what did you see from Jeremy Roach in, in his first start in, in a few weeks? Yeah, uh, Keels has been in kind of a dry slump recently. He's not been shooting for well. I think three point shots was one of his best parts of his game early on in the season. It's just not been there recently. Um, he's a big guard and defensively, he needs to step up a little bit too. I think Roach has kind of outplayed him in every aspect. I think Roach has been a great on-ball defender. He's shot it really well from, from deep. And uh, he's got one of the best layup packages on the whole team. Just seeing him get around some of those bigger guys is really impressive to see. So I've been really high on Roach recently. He showed up big again uh, last night, and he'll need to show up again big tomorrow night if uh, Duke wants to move past Michigan State. Yeah, he's going to be big tomorrow. And, and he was really – I thought he was big time last night, 12 points. Only three of eight from the field, but again, he's not hes not like your prototypical just scoring guard. He's going to distribute. He had five assists, uh, only two turnovers, a steal, a block even, which is crazy. It's a testament to how you know, good Duke, Duke's defense was at times and also just the size advantage that they had against uh, Cal State Fullerton. But, yeah, just looking through it again, I mean, Wendell Moore, 13, six assists and six rebounds, a steal, only two turnovers. But he had that slippage kind of – like double slippage almost in the first half. Um, what did you went to the press conference earlier today uh, over at over in Greenville? Uh, what did Wendell say about his hip? And you know what what's he gonna is he gonna face any setbacks for? Tomorrow? Yeah, uh, that play was a bit ridiculous. Um, it kind of looked like something out of like a like a comic, just like slipping twice in the same play like that doing the splits. Um, it didn't. He didn't look like appear to be in that much pain while the game was happening he ended up playing through most of the game um even on that supposed injury coach k talked about it a little bit after the game saying that it was a hip injury um they weren't exactly sure how much like like how much it's impacting him right now or if it tightens up it kind of seemed like it was just like a tightness issue and not anything more than that um they said they'll test it out today and tomorrow and see how it goes or see how he's feeling before Michigan State game, I think he'll be fine just the way he was talking about in the press conference. He didn't seem too concerned about it. Coach K didn't seem too concerned about it either. He just seemed concerned about, like, the general player safety going into the games again with this slippery floor. You know, there's ice rink under the uh, under the hardwood, so that's what's causing a lot of the slippage. And uh, I think it can get kind of dicey if uh, they don't figure out how to clean that up. Yeah, I mean, the like the ice rink underneath um... – I guess has to have, to have some role, but they have like a thermal layer. I read on Twitter that they have like a thermal layer that like is a buffer. Um, so I, I don't know what the deal is. I've, I've read that, you know, Greenville is, I've never been to Greenville, but I, from what I've heard, it seems like a cool city, uh, but just like the arena might not be like up to par for an NCAA tournament uh, like first weekend. So who knows? I mean, uh, I think, Hopefully they get somehow get that figured out because I did see a foster lawyer for, for Davidson. He slipped last night at the end of that game against Michigan State. So that's probably something they got to look at. And like player safety is a, big, a huge deal, especially this late in the season. You do not like that. You do not want to see, you know, injuries are obviously always 
play a role, but you don't want to see injuries due to the court being uh, like just fully like not up to not up to par. So uh, yeah, I think we can we could probably transition. That's all. That's about all we had from from the uh, Cal State Fullerton game. Obviously, you know, overall seventeen point win. Uh, a couple spurts here and there by Cal State, I think, uh, made it a little closer at times. I know there was that 8 0 run late in the first half. Um, but, you know, after that, uh, Paolo, went, Paolo and Mark kind of ended that first half with a couple, couple easy baskets inside. So I think Duke just has to be wary of, of not letting those runs get out of hand against Michigan State. So, yeah, so let's, let's go move on to that one. Obviously, the, uh, the sixth matchup in March Madness between Coach K and Tom Izzo. Uh, two, you know, legends of the game in their own right. Um, been at their respective uh, post for for as long since before we both been born. So, uh, you know, what's the what's going to be the key tomorrow for for Duke against Michigan State, who obviously is coming off a one point win against Davidson last night? Yeah, I think that the key for for Duke is going to be locking up Joey Hauser. He was dominant in that performance uh, against Davidson. We, we stuck around and, and saw them battle out a little bit. Both teams were just relentless. Like, I mean, that's that was a great game to watch. They're just going back and forth the whole time. And I think either Davidson or Michigan State would have brought a great matchup to Duke. Um, having it be Michigan State, though, my main concern is going to be uh, Joey Hauser and how he is going to be handled by Mark Williams and Powell on the inside. I mean, he can – he was shooting it so efficiently and just kind of taking over the game. Uh, is a force on defense and really just like great footwork on offense. So he's able to get around. And I think that uh, he could give Mark some trouble, although I'm not ex- too familiar with his game enough to know like how he is as an outside shooter. I know Mark struggles when he's guarding guys who can shoot on the outside. He tends to jump a lot. Um, so that that's one of the things that just concerns me. I know they also uh, just the guard play, you know, when they bring veteran, veteran guards, that can always give Duke some trouble. And then, like you talked about with coaching, it's just going to be a battle of mindsets. Um, so I know Coach K said in the press conference today that his players are going to be ready and they're going to have to be because we all know the Duke-Michigan State game is never easy. Yeah, it's going to be a physical, tough physical game as usual between these two. I mean, I, I think Hauser, you know, he's only averaging – and this includes last night, he's averaging 7.3 points per game. So that's not even in the top three leading scores on the team. He's actually uh, sixth on the team in scoring, which is a little weird considering uh, just his, like his skill set. He shoots 40% from three, uh, 78 from the line, only gets five rebounds. So he's more of like a stretch big. So he could definitely lure, you know, Mark and Paolo uh, if they want to go small and put him at the five. Um he can lure them out of the paint and open up to some things to drive for like, like uh, Max Christie and, uh, and Tyson Walker. So uh, I think the thing for Duke that they got to, that they really got to look at is can they get out in transition? Can they get those easy buckets? Uh, one no more said that they, they really took the last week in practice, three tough practices leading up to the Cal state coaching game to just really reconnect on defense, you know, get out and pressure teams, get out and transition, get live ball turnovers, just get into their offense easier. And against Michigan State, who's like who's going to go through their offensive sets, who's going to be methodical, um, you know, the Duke needs to be able to just get out in transition and get some of those get some of those you know easy baskets uh, to get get like I would say to, it's really important to get guys like Wendell Moore and and Trevor Keels going, especially Keels coming in off the bench. If he can get you know he's very physical on the perimeter, if he gets some steals, get out in transition, it's going to be a big help for Duke. So what are, what else are your thoughts on on tomorrow's match? Yeah. Yeah, transition has been just been like baseball for Duke all year. It's some, it's one of my main notches against their ability to make a deep run in the March Madness. Um, great teams can run transition well, and and Duke they can force turnovers. They really don't get out quickly, and when they do, it doesn't really seem like they know what they're doing as a team. You know, Wendell Moore or any one of them individually can run the floor well, um, but when they try to pass it around, there's a lot of miscommunication happening. Um, it showed up in the ACC championship game, and even showed up. The game last night, uh, they had a transition opportunity and just took a bad shot. Uh, and all of a sudden, Cal State Fullerton was going back the other direction. So you really got to take advantage of those opportunities. And uh, if they can figure that out sooner rather than later, I think it will significantly benefit them. Yeah, I think another thing is, you know, it's I don't expect – I'm not looking at tomorrow to be like to be one player that takes it over. I think both teams are pretty balanced. 
um, in the scoring column. Duke was really balanced last night, and Michigan State with you know their leading scorer Gabe Brown only averages eleven points a game. So it's not it's not a team that's gonna you know have one guy maybe light you up. Uh, really balanced. I mean, Gabe Brown, Christie, Marcus Bingham, Tyson Walker, AJ Hogard, all those guys are are really you know they can all get going in a hurry. And I think it's gonna just gonna be a combination of you know who's hot on that on maybe that night and and a couple guys who can get going that that Duke might need to focus on. And same thing, same thing on when it comes to Michigan State defensively, because I mean Duke can can get you in waves, and whether it's Jeremy Roach or AJ Griffin, um, you know Duke's gonna have to. It's going to need some guy to, to step up and have maybe a big game, but uh, I think it'll be, you know, a scoring from a scoring perspective, a lot of, just a lot of guys chipping in here and there. So um, yeah, I, I think uh, AJ Griffin's performance is going to be key because he played okay in this one. I think uh, offensively I'm talking about, he is one of the team's premier three point shooters and only shot, I think two for seven from three, um, which he needs to get that average up when it comes to this. And when it, he had a lot of open looks, um, either passed him up or did not hit the shot. So I think, uh, I think if given those opportunities again, he needs to hit for Duke to be really taking control in this game tomorrow. Yeah. I was actually going to bring, bring him up too. Cause um, you know, with the, with the way Michigan State is going to play defense, they're, they're going to be tough on the perimeter and the Duke's going to need a guy to maybe rise up and hit a couple, you know, three point shots over, over pressure and, and Griff might be that guy. Um, so, I mean, we're getting ready to, to wrap this pretty, pretty soon. We just want to make this a short one, but uh, you know, what's one thing that I think if, if Duke does this fill in the blank, if Duke does this, they'll win the game tomorrow. Um, I, well, I think we kind of talked about, it. I, I think I just said it. I think if, if, if Duke hits, hits their threes, like if they can hit their open shots, I know they're going to get it because they can move the ball well. Um, even if Michigan State's a great premier team, if they can hit their open threes, they'll win. If not, they, they may find themselves in some trouble. Right. Yeah. I was going to, I was probably going to go on lo- along similar lines. I think for Michigan State to win, I think, I think it's going to have to be, like you said, like Joey Hauser is, is a guy that can give, give Duke's bigs a little bit of trouble. I mean, Theo John's always getting into foul trouble recently. Um, he's like immune to, he's seemingly immune to, to staying out of foul trouble, even though he's getting limited minutes, um, which really puts a puts a lot of stress on on Williams and Ben Caro if they want to put him at the five uh, to stay on the floor and stay out of foul trouble. So, uh, and if Hauser is going to be a guy that can stretch the floor and, and make things difficult for those bigs, I mean, Michigan State can can slow the game down and and get you know just you know go get into their offense and and just make it you know those classic. Uh, just like mid range mid range jumpers that uh, that Hauser and and a lot and you know Gabe Brown and a lot of those guys can can hit because uh, you know they're, they're again they're a balanced team they share the ball and uh, they've got some they got some experience in big games I mean they beat Purdue at home on that that near buzzer beater by Walker um, they got to the Big Ten tournament semifinal so they're they're a veteran they're at this point in the season they're a veteran team they've gone through it all in a tough conference so I like. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be another like it almost. I know it's you know it works out with the two seed and the seven seed, but I I think this is almost a you know, this is a, a game that maybe doesn't even deserve to be a second round game. I think it might even deserve to be a far you know a game that is a little farther on in the tournament. So uh, what are your any other any other thoughts? Any other things to, to look for tomorrow? Yeah, I'll just say that I don't I don't have anything profound to say. I'll just this is not going to be like a walk in the park for Duke because it's a two seed over a seven seed. Um, we've seen a lot of a lot of high seeds contend lower seeds so far in March Madness, and I think Michigan State's one of the better seven seeds in the tournament. So um, they're definitely going to give Duke <laughs> some trouble. Yeah, Amen. I, I this is not going to be this is Duke open the six and a half point favorites. It's I mean, that's not that many points, but I think it's going to be really, really close. I would say I would side probably with uh, with the camp that's in that says Duke's going to win this one. So it's going to be really close. It's going to come down to it come down to free throw shooting, you know, the little plays, offensive rebounds, uh, things that just in March, you just got to come out on top at the end. So, Alex, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for joining for this uh, little brief version, briefer version of the of the podcast and uh, and have fun the rest of the weekend in Greenville, man. 
Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. I uh, always love talking basketball. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in.